prior uh, when they had it before the this period. Last year it was kind of wet out here. Yeah, it was still yeah, it was still uh, still pretty decent turnout. Hey, how you doing? Tommy Morris here, live from the 2013 Detroit Chevrolet Belle Isle Grand Prix, again with a bunch of friends, uh, great people that are doing lots of great things for the community here at the Grand Prix, and I happen to be with Pat Wright, racing for kids, uh, who's been around for quite a while with the an organization, 24 years now, uh, cooperating with the Penske family and the Grand Prix, man. So what do you think about the festivities this weekend? They, uh, it's really great, Tommy. I mean, the, uh, obviously, Roger Penske has group done a terrific job. It gets better every year. And uh, we're here today uh, through the good graces of Firestone. We, uh, we brought a bunch of patients from Children's Hospital of Michigan. And uh, Firestone is entertaining them here in their uh, Chalet hospital, uh, Hospitality Suite. And uh, we had a fine meal. We met uh, Sebastian Sabadra, the big car driver, came over and spent some time with the kids. And then my wife, Debbie Wright, who is our event manager, and Sue Hannawald, our hospital visit coordinator, took the kids through a tour of the Pick and Paddock area and saw a bunch of other drivers and got some autographs and pictures. And it's been a terrific day for these kids. Now, as far as... Uh you know, you mentioned uh, with Penske, with Firestone. How long have you been um, partner up now with uh, the Firestone Group? Uh, well, actually, we're in our 24th year, and normal, I think 23 of those years we've been involved with Firestone, and uh, they uh, they make hospital visits with us. They send the colorful Firehawk to the hospital with us, and uh, at uh, selected tracks around the country, we have a similar program with them as we do here, bringing kids from the local children's hospital for uh, a day of fun and a respite from uh, from their hospital cares or some difficult treatments. You know, we went, went around and seen the kids taking their pictures, great big smiles on their face over by the uh, by the podiums. Uh, how does that even uh, around you, it has to be a great inspiration for the work that you do. No, it really is. You know, the interesting thing about this, we've been doing this, as I said, for 24 years, and the doctors who care for these kids will tell you that the, uh, these kinds of events are a very important part of their recovery therapy. They, uh, they, get, they get better faster because of this, and the ones who are chronically ill have a terrific day that takes their mind off of some uh, very difficult treatments. 
And now after the Grand Prix, uh, where what is your next? What's what are your plans throughout the rest of the season? We have a really busy. Uh, we're gonna have a busy few weeks. We were at the Indy 500 last week and had three fundraisers. Uh, it's interesting that 23 of the 33 drivers who started the 500 last week are racing for kids drivers, meaning they make hospital visits on our behalf. Uh, next week we will be at Children's Hospital Dallas in Texas, and the week after that we'll be at Children's Hospital Wisconsin. We're actually the official charity of the uh, Indy Fest uh, race in Milwaukee, and uh, then we'll be heading to Iowa and uh, have a week, and then we're in the Poconos. It's pretty busy. Definitely busy, and if people wanted to uh, uh, donate, if they want to help with the cause, racing for kids, besides Googling it, it is everywhere, besides looking it up on YouTube, besides uh, finding it, where can they get a hold of you directly? Uh, well, actually, uh, two ways. You go to our website, racingforkids.org, and they can see more, they can volunteer, they can make donations. Also, they can call us here in Detroit at our office, which is area 313-882. 3403. Uh, would love to have them get involved. Pat Wright, Racing for Kids, Detroit Grand Prix 2013. Thanks. Thank you. We'll go ahead and get started with today's post qualifying press conference for Duel One here in the Bell Isle. Uh, the race will take place tomorrow. We are pleased to be joined by several of our Firestone Fast Six qualifiers for tomorrow's race. Uh, we will start with uh, James Jakes of Ray Hall Letterman Racing, or Lanigan Racing, who qualified fourth. This is a career best qualifying result for James. His previous best was eighth at Motegi in 2011. Uh, James, talk about today's qualifying and making uh, the Firestone Fast Six for the first time. Yeah, obviously it was, uh, it was pretty tough out there with the conditions and uh, I think the biggest key was just staying patient really. We were out in the first group, uh, the first 12, and uh, it was quite a bit wetter so you just had to make sure that you had a clear lap at the, uh, at the end of the session with a couple of couple of minutes to go to get the map, you know, to maximize the potential out of the car and I think we did that. I've been pretty happy with the pace all weekend, uh, especially in qualifying this morning, sorry, in practice this morning, but the balance on the reds changed quite a bit as we on. So we've still got a little bit of work to do, but obviously with the weather, with the weather coming in and what they're forecasting tomorrow, <laughs> starting up as high as you can is going to be key, and uh, here we've got a great position. Great, thanks. We've also been joined by Mike Conway, who uh, joined Dale Coin Racing this week for the race at Belle Isle. Uh, Mike is making his second start this season in the IZOD IndyCar Series. Mike, talk about today's qualifying. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, I was obviously with the drying in, the, in our session. It was just a case of, yeah, you've got to get that time in. And, and the tyres just started to go off pretty quick, so I just did one time and then just try, tried to back off, pull the tyres down, then go for another one, and that was enough then to, to put me through. So, um, and then obviously the other two after that were uh, still tricky. I mean, drying conditions, and, and at the end there, um, yeah, just three tyres up pretty hard. I think we went out maybe a little bit too early. And um, but yeah, I think you know to be third, straight back in the car again is, uh, is good. So obviously a good start position for the race. So. Uh, yeah, big thank you to Dale Coy for making this possible and um, all the guys at the team. Thanks. Our uh, reigning champion, uh, IZOD IndyCar Series champion, Ryan hunter Ray qualified fifth. Uh, this match is the best uh, qualifying result here for Ryan at Belle Isle. Uh, he did fifth in 2007 as well. Um, in his three previous starts here at Belle Isle, he started no worse than seventh. Ryan, if you can, walk us through your qualifying run today. Um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it with the rain and then the drying track. It, it keeps you nervous, it keeps you on your toes, and you're always searching every lap for that, that you know, that tenth of a second, um, which is a lot of fun in these cars. So that, that was cool. I just don't know where the speed went that last uh, that last round because in the top 12 we were 80.2, and then we only went two tenths quicker in the fast six. So we got to look at that. But uh, a little disappointed with it. Um, but, you know, we're in the past six, we're starting up front, and um, we should be able to go have a good day. Um, unfortunately, Mike Conway's here crashing the uh, fast six party again, so. Sorry, man. Never, <laughs> never count him out. We're also joined by Ryan's teammate, EJ Viso, who will start from the front row in second place. This is a uh, match as a career best start for EJ. He also started second in Brazil just a month ago. EJ, talk about today's qualifying. Well, pretty much uh, mirroring what the other guy said, this is a very busy track, it really keeps us uh, busy and this qualifying was fun. In one of the sessions it was pretty much a fully wet session and then the second one was done but then 
the, the third one was fully dry. It was fun to drive, and team keeps giving us a pretty con competitive car. And little by little, uh, things are coming together. I'm very excited uh, to be once again in the front row. And, uh, congratulations, my friend uh, Mike Conway. You did a great job. Great, we'll go ahead and open it for questions. I believe we do have a wireless mic. We'll start with Bruce. Well, guys, how unique is it that between now and the race that you just qualified for, you're going to be on the track qualifying for another race since the next day? Uh, I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer, but the qualifying, <laughs> the, the, the rules just don't make any sense. With uh, you get locked into one group, all the all the evens get in there. So I'm sorry, all the odds get locked in, into group one tomorrow morning. If it's a drying track or something like that, you're pretty much fate sealed there. So um, yeah, very strange for sure. But you know, you kind of roll with it and, and get going, right? It's it's all part of it. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of how they did it is a bit funny. I think if you get you know on the where you line up in your group and then you're lined up on that side, then yeah, that makes sense. Well, that's a lot more sense. To do it more sense time. Is, for sure, imagine how unfair it will be that he ranks a little bit for one group and then onto the other. And you're going to be screwed on me because probably rules are not written in the most clever way. We'll go with Mike. Uh, Mike, you, you come and go in this series and you turn up, you, you win races uh, today, you uh, qualify third. I mean, how difficult really is that, particularly for a smaller team? Uh, and second, for all you guys, uh, what was the track surface like, uh, particularly the new section of the extended uh, uh, area in the three, uh, the few spins there uh, during the session? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously not easy just jumping in and, um, you know, just getting the job done. But, you know, I think um, obviously Justin's done a great job with the car over the, over the year. And um, it felt good. I mean, it's definitely a handful around here. You're really hanging out. and. Um, yeah, no, I just felt comfortable as soon as we got in. And um, I suppose it's the main thing, isn't it, really? If you're, you can just get up to speed really fast, knowing that everything's all good, then it uh, makes your job a lot easier. So, um, but yeah, didn't have too much time to prepare for this one as the last one, but still, um, really happy with third, and I think we can do a good job. Anyway. And I think it's the follow-up question. Yeah, well, then, uh, for all the guys, uh, what, what is the track like for the service? Yeah, I am. Um, I love the new track there. I'm not sure what the other guys think, but it's uh, it's fun. It's really fun to drive, and it, it flows a lot better than the old one used to do. You know, once you go down into three and you know four, five, and six, it's it's fun. Um, the asphalt and the concrete definitely you get a balance shift mid, you know, kind of entry and mid exit of the corner. Uh, you're not sure what you're going to get, especially in the rain. But it's, um, you know, so big thank you to uh, the Penske organization for. You know, do, doing such a great job here and uh, yeah, and, and making it so fun to drive. I think the, this Grand Prix is every time getting stronger. I believe that the changes that they've been doing year after year, they've been uh, very positive. Uh, for sure they needed to do those changes for this year in the tarmac and with the asphalt joints, which uh, I think they did a great job. You know, it, it, it definitely keep us very busy through all the grip changes, but it's fun, it's the same for everyone, and we need to deal with that. Yeah, big thanks to Mr. Penske and his group for, for extending the track back to the way, basically the way it used to be when Carr was here. Um, I think Elio didn't like it. So I, it's, uh, it's definitely fun. It's, it's, um, it's tough. It's, it's violent in the car, I can tell you that. But it's, um, it's certainly improved a lot with the new, uh, with the new paper. We also have Alex Tagliani of Barracuda Racing joining us. He will he qualified six for tomorrow's dual one here in Detroit. Alex, uh, your second consecutive top six qualifying result here at Belle Isle. Walk us through uh, today's qualifying sessions. Yeah, it's um, you know it's really nice to be back in the front. Obviously, we struggled a little bit with the new tires this year from the beginning of the year, and we um, worked a lot. The team worked a lot, and uh, you know it was. You know, kind of nervous a bit at the beginning to unload the car. Uh, being a one-car team, there's not too many chances. We unload and the car is really fast, so really happy about that. The team did a great job, and uh, you know, qualifying car was really good too. But um, made some changes, got like really greedy at the end. We uh, we knew we had a chance on the pole, and we uh, kind of messed up the car a bit. So 
it was really unfortunate because cars are really fast, so hopefully we can make it up in the race. We'll take a, our last question from, from Larry and then we'll uh, let you guys go and get started with our poll center. Can you tell us a little bit more, Ryan, about you know, call and file and kind of put us inside the car and also positioning here, how key is it in terms of qualifying because this is so challenging to pass. Yeah, um, well in the car it's just very, it's extremely bumpy and uh, low level of grip because it is a new surface. Um, and it, you know, you're just constantly sawing at the wheel and then uh, it, it's, it's really busy, uh, especially once the rubber gets washed away with a little bit of rain, it, it, it becomes, uh, it livens up again and, and the balance that you just had changes. So it's, uh, it's tough to stay after, uh, that's for sure. And yeah, it's gonna be tough to pass, absolutely. It always is on street circuit, so. I'm optimistic maybe we can get some more passing done in turn three this year. Um, you know, with the difference between reds and black tires, the alternates and primaries. So there's a chance for that and, um, and maybe some more down the back straight. So now we have two, two uh, passing zones instead of just one. I want to thank our Firestone Fast 6 qualifiers for joining us for today's press conference. Thank you guys for your time um, and best of luck in tomorrow's race. We are now pleased to be joined by our Verizon P1 award winner for Dual 1 here tomorrow in Belle Isle, Dario Franchitti. This is his 31st career IndyCar poll. Um, this is the first poll for Dario at Belle Isle and his third front row start here at the track. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Dario's led 44 laps here and seven previous starts, and he's only qualified outside the top 10 once here at the track here in Detroit. So, Dario, walk us through qualifying today. Yeah, well, I'll start in the beginning of the day because uh, I four laps in practice this morning. I uh, I got caught out with a bit of brakes were uh, were heating up, didn't catch the car fast enough when when it sort of turned. I guess it was about ninety right into the wall. They're going into turn eight. I think eight, turn eight. Um, I just wasn't fast enough to catch it and uh, took the right front corner off. So the target boys had a busy busy morning rebuilding the car. So really had no experience in the, of, the, of the track really, um, apart from what I had when I last raced here in 2000 on that layout. So, um, first, and I'm sitting in the car, it starts raining, it's like, okay, it's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, I managed to get through that in the second session, which was drying, and uh, got through that one. And then at the end there, I had no expectation, you know, I've got, with that 10 what, grid penalty, um, I just went out and pushed as hard as I could every lap and um, the last lap actually threw again turn eight and I got a bit crossed up in the middle and almost hit the wall so lost a good bit of time there but uh, ultimately it was good enough and uh, got to thank the, the target boys for repairing the car and um, you know, although we're starting at 11th I'm obviously delighted to have uh, to put the pole here especially after this morning. We'll go ahead with questions starting with Bruce. Dario, what will the style of racing be like in the Saturday race, considering that the cars have got to, you're going to have to use the same car on Sunday's race too, so do you kind of see that the guys might be a little careful in the race, more so on Saturday? Doubtful. <laughs> Very doubtful. These things can be rebuilt quite quickly. Um, I don't, I, I think it'll be, you know, both, both races will be aggressive. This track, I think I heard Ryan say it, just by its nature, requires quite an aggressive style all the time. Really on edge the whole way around, and uh, so no, I, I, I don't see one race being more aggressive than another. I think they're both going to be pretty good. Uh, and because of that you, the unique aspect of you've just qualified for a race, but before you start that race, you're going to have another qualification session for another race. Yeah, sure, aren't we? Yeah, I haven't really thought about that too much, but yeah, that's obviously um, something new and uh, a little confusing, I think, for everybody. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do tomorrow. And obviously, it's a different format. So, no, but again, just talking about just now, really, really proud of uh, the job the whole team did there to uh, to get that point. And uh, feel pretty good about it. And, you know, looking forward to racing again in this format of, of track. I think uh, for for several reasons we had to use the small layout, and then uh, you know Roger, Hensley, and, and, and Bud and Charles really, you know, they got to to get back to the extended layout, and I think that's a lot racier track. Right? Craig, I was even able to pass PT here back in 99, I think. So, you know, it's, uh, it's been a lot of hard work going into this this venue, and uh, it's it's really cool to work with a promoter that you know you point something out on the track walk, and it's literally done 
an hour later and you get a phone call, hey mate, I've sorted that out. It's unbelievable. You know, it's a, it's a really big call. Mike, yeah, Dario, the, the areas that you know did come up last year, I mean, uh, that obviously we prepared and done uh, and, and the track and extended, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, did you find anything uh, weird out there today? Wasn't it all good? I mean, obviously changing conditions um, with the wet to start with, um, some standing water um, in several points, uh, and then just the different grip levels on different surfaces as it, as it dries out. Um, typical street course stuff, really. So, um, you know, I don't know if Bud's here. But how, how many millions did you spend resurfacing this joint? <laughs> <laughs> if you're allowed to say two million, Dario could be one million. Dario tax pretty good. No, I mean it's two million. Yeah. Cool. There's there you go, two million dollars. So you know it's, it's bloody impressive, and, and, and there's obviously more improvements on the way. Uh, that's we should be racing here. It's the motor city, isn't it? Dario, how different was your car from the first round qualifying where something you had five cylinders on a good lap, uh, then going into the final round, you were you able to adapt much, or were you have to brag a car in the full uh, The first round was really not crashing on the standing water at first, and then just you know finding where where the grip was. Where, where, was, where the grip was, where the grip was, and at each lap it, it got a little bit different. You know, the first lap obviously a lot more standing water, and it's amazing how much the water these things clear through the floor and, and the tires. Um, last lap in P1 was a little ruined actually, but I think Charlie had spun in exit one, and they said yellow in turn two, actually turn two, and he was parked. He was actually still, he was, wasn't there anymore, but I slowed down there, so it kind of ruined two, and it obviously turn three I had to pass. He was limping back to the pits, I had to pass him. So. It ruined that lap, but um, you know, just finding the limit um, and the changeable conditions. Obviously, second practice was the same. It was, it was, track was drying. Um, the guys made a really good tactical call there, actually, to, to sort of see exactly how the track had changed uh, from from first from from our first run. Obviously, then how it changed through through the group two with Dixie and all those guys. Um, and then the last one was pretty. It was, it was I would say fully dry, but. Pretty slippery with, with the rubber in. and the car was, was obviously good enough in, uh, in all of them, but it's, it's a handful. I mean, it's it's all arms and elbows, and that's not my traditional style, so I'm just channeling my inner Colin McRae. Other questions from the We'll go Tony and then Bruce. Uh, Dario, did you get any advance notification when Elio spun in uh, the second session? In went yellow and then it went red later on, what was kind of the communication process through that? Um, I got on the radio, I got the heat, there's a yellow uh, N3, but the car is, is not in the racing line, it's off, it's off to one side, it's in the back too. and then we didn't know what was going to happen, and then the yellow comes out, and, uh, and the, I'll show the red comes out after that, so, yeah, that was, pretty, I think it could have got pretty interesting there. Dario, as you said before, this being Motor City as a member of the Honda contingent, how uh, how do you feel about coming in here in a Chevrolet race in Motor City in Detroit, having a chance to maybe take some of their glory away from it? Well, I think the Chevy guys did a brilliant job last year. They won in the championship. They also, last week in Indianapolis, they, they won it. Um, we came here, but we won't we, As Honda came in last year, won in the, we came here, got a one, two, three. That didn't, I don't think, sat well with the Chevy guys. And that's great because we love that competition with them. And when they win a Honda race, they're the first ones, you know, they're like, <laughs> you know, we, we love that. There's a, there's a fierce rivalry, but it's uh, it's very respectful. So um, we would love nothing better than to uh, to win here on Saturday and Sunday uh, at their own race. But at the same time, we're very thankful for the fact that they're supporting the, the, the championship as, as, you know, as Honda did. We're lucky enough to such committed manufacturers. Any other questions? I will take our last question back there. Yeah. Mark. Well, Derek, given that I mean you were kind of you were nowhere last Sunday and you suddenly you're looming larger than life, is that a reflection of the changeable conditions today or has Honda stepped it up in the interim somehow? 
last week was a combination of many factors. Um, some were definitely at our door as far as, as the, the target team, you know, the way we set the car up, whether it was gear ratios, you know, mechanical setup, aero setup, we didn't get it right. Um, Honda, I think, are a disadvantage too last week on uh, Edinburgh. And um, you know, we were just never in the hunt. But it's a much different uh, track here. And obviously, same as the, kind of like Brazil with different, with the street course tire, and the, the uh, you know, the mechanical thing, the engines, are, the, the, the way the engines are mapped, obviously, is a lot different. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're up, we're up front there. Um, but last, last week, as I say, it's, it's uh, uh, yeah, trust me. We weren't happy. We were not happy in any way, shape, or form with, with any of our performance. And uh, but that's what it takes in this to, to win a race or certainly a championship. You've got to be strong on all these types of tracks, and you've got to have perfect days. And, and we didn't. Dario, before we wrap up here, we have a special presentation. Hello. It's a good one. <laughs> in honor of winning the pole position for the first Chevrolet. Indie Duel in Detroit presented by Quicken Loans. I'd like to invite up Jacques Panis uh, with Shinola, the official timepiece and timekeeper of the Grand Prix, uh, to present you with one of the first American made watches being manufactured right here in Detroit. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dario. Best of luck tomorrow.